and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Connor LaRock, who is in Ontario in Canada. How are you doing, Connor? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. And I'm very excited to talk to, uh, to, to Connor because he is an entrepreneur. He's an author. He's a speaker. He, his company helps organizations with sales, marketing, lead generation. But most of all, I am uh, excited to talk to Connor because he's going to give me insights into that most fascinating of generations, the millennials, the ones that people of my generation and, and it's really weird when you get to a point when you're at that generation removed, you know, when you're older, um, that we, yeah, I'm going to be honest, that we struggle with understanding sometimes. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, and I like the, uh, I was just looking at your activities, your MMA across training. I'm a martial artist, love MMA too. So this oh, is uh, it's all good, good combination. So Connor, first of all, just give me some insights into what do you think are the most uh, the most misunderstood traits of millennials by people of my generation? So I think the biggest, the, the, the most misunderstood traits, so we live in a wild generation where we have access to so much information. There's so much stuff getting consumed. It's almost become easier, but then more difficult because our focus, we have no focal point anymore. It's like, okay, so one day I'm going to be a doctor, the next a lawyer. I want to be an online marketer, whatever it is. So there's a big confusion where people don't know where to go. It's like you have so much information coming at you that who is the person that I listen to, right? And you have so many, like, there's so many different points. Okay, work really hard. But then, you know, so one of the biggest things, I think we have to go back to the fundamentals. So, so the traits that are misunderstood, um, there is no such thing as this, you know, residual income. You can get that through real estate, but that's one thing that, you know, millennials are like, I want to work from a laptop. You can do that. You can run a business off your phone, use it as a weapon, quote unquote. Um, but the biggest thing is it's, it's all going to take an effort and work because we're all doing similar things. It's like myself, we're in, we're in the marketing field, for instance. And if I were to just talk about marketing, it's like everybody's doing marketing. You have to have some wow factor. Um, but in terms of actual the terminology for millennials, I think they think we're lazy, but I think it's more so we're not clear. It's that clarity piece. We don't know where to go because we have so much information in our face. Uh, saying this is the road to go. You have to go to law school, become a doctor. Let's be an influencer, whatever it is. Um, so you really have to, if you're not clear, if you don't have self-awareness, uh, that's the biggest thing you're, you're going to, you know, have a hard time to kind of maneuver for where you want to go and, and follow your heart. And one of the things that is a, is a struggle, as I said, for, you know, for people who've been in the workforce for a long time is you know, this, this idea of, I mean, there's statistics out there now that millennials will stay less than two years in a job. You know, they, they bounce around a lot, um, which is fine, but it's a struggle for how it's a struggle for people running organizations is how do you set up an organization that ha, that can uh, cope with constant turnover? Right. I think one of the biggest things people need to focus on and, and you see it, it's like, I remember watching, uh, was it Jack Welch, former CEO of General Electric? And uh, he said the best thing is it's the culture. It all comes down to you want to be the, the place where all the cool people want to go. And that's how you can keep the retention if you have the right incentives. A lot of time, it's not so much, even for millennials, it's not about the money. It's about making money matter. What are you working towards? We want to know who, who's the person operating this company. What are they giving back towards? What's their purpose? Whereas before, I think it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I need a job. I need to support my family. Whereas now, in a sense, we're looking for more meaning behind where we work. And then we're, we feel like we're a part of it, opposed to just being another number in a docket kind of deal. Mm -hmm. and do you so think, though, piece. yeah, so do you, do you think, though, that will change as, as you get older? I um, mean, do you think that's something that's very important now, but maybe as you get older and, and have different responsibilities, maybe those things will change? I think they're going to change uh, quite significantly because what's happening, you look at AI coming into the market right now, which is going to be wiping out a mass amount of jobs. So you have to look at things like possibly universal income. Uh, the biggest thing, what's what's happening, I find specifically, is so before it's like we, we see so many people living this, this you know, influencer type of life. So it, it's hard. So it's like, well, there's always that idea that there's something better. And it comes back to the basis that you need to know yourself, know your strengths, know where you want to go to, to truly actually reach a point. So I think what happens, and I could be completely wrong, but what I found in my research in a lot of this is that a lot of these people switching jobs, uh, it's because they, they're not clear on specifically what they want to do. 
I know people that are the, the top in the world, the peak performers, they knew to a T, they could go to sleep and tell you, this is what we're going to do. And they just practiced over and over and over. And that's why they're the top of their industry or whatever, whatever field they're a part of. So it'll, I think it's going to change uh, for, for the most part, but I think we have to go back even further to get super, super clear uh, to keep those employees and then in, integrate that in our culture. And then the security part, which is, is dying. That's the other part that's playing, you know, kind of the stress related uh, on, on that aspect of it. Yeah. And that, and that uh, the security related thing is I totally understand because it's uh, we have seen fundamental changes since the last recession and the, you know, the 2008 financial crash in that um, people of all generations have made decisions of, I'm not going to, uproot my life and locate myself in an expensive area close to my work because what happens if in two years you fire me or downsize and I'm left in an expensive area uh, with no job, right? So they're choosing more and more to live where they want and look for remote jobs. So I think there's an intergenerational, there's a cross-generational change happening in how people, you know, in people's relationship to work. 100%. And that's one of the biggest things. There's always that argument. It's like, you know, do we need an eight hour, like if you do an eight hour day, but then there's some people that produce better if you're doing a six hour day, it's because they go all in. It's not, we're not taking time for lunch. It's like, let's just do these six hours, get the work done, move it down the, the pipeline. I think it all comes down to, uh, we got to aim more. And this is my opinion. Again, it could be different, more of an indi uh, individualistic approach in the sense that you empower the individual so that they go into that group and environment and they bring that energy. So everybody, yeah, you work on your strengths and things and then you meet in the middle. So you have your leader, but you take, uh, take everybody's opinions and things and grow it, but you have your, your set missions, values, goals that are in alignment with the company. And I think that's the biggest thing. When someone doesn't see the clarity in the mission and values, they don't really know why they're there. They don't have the purpose. It doesn't give them that extra push to say, okay, I'm going to work a 12 hour shift today. Uh, I'll put the time in. That's why they're just punching the clock saying, I just need a paycheck. Let's just go. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I think there's another thing that I think particularly is a, is a pressure on, on, you know, your generation and the generation, you know, coming next is, is this idea of instant success or overnight success. It's, uh, you know, people look at, people look at these, you know, YouTube stars or Instagram stars or whatever, and they go, oh, you know, they just became really famous, really young overnight. Uh, and when we were growing up, there wasn't so many overnight successes because there wasn't the ability to do that. So it's almost like if, if you're not an instant success at something, you start to feel like, is there something wrong with me? I think that's an intense amount of pressure for people. I think you're absolutely right. And that's the thing with the exposure piece. You're, you're seeing it everywhere. It's like you go on Instagram. You don't know if these people are buying the cars, if they're renting them, they're yeah. just buying it. They, it's all, it's all smoke and mirrors for the most part, even in the marketing industry, I'm part of a lot of it's fluff and you have to find the true substance. And then it comes back to that confusion where you have these, these kids growing up and seeing, Oh, look at Justin Bieber. He got famous when they don't realize he's one in a million yeah. and you got to keep putting the content out there on the other side of that, which I find really interesting and fascinating is that it gives you a shot where I have all this free marketing so I can use my LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all this stuff to create my brand, my identity, show, showcase my mission for free. And then in hopes to do that, whereas back in your day, maybe, you know, let's just say 20 years ago, even we didn't have a shot yet to get on television and the odds were even slimmer. At least now I can pay for advertisements and, and try to, you know, at least, showcase my mission to mass numbers of people which is which is great and i think where the, you touched on something there I, th I think the key piece there though is the and you mentioned it earlier is the fact that you still have to work hard right these tools are available to everybody but the people who are successful with them are still the people who put in the hard work and that and that for me that's probably one of the things that we struggle with the most because you know it, with the generational thing because it seems that somehow the concept of hard work has got pushed to the bottom right Right. And we're and we're still going. Yeah, you may have all the tools and all the opportunities in the world, but you still got to work hard to make them realize to realize them. I, you're absolutely right. And it's like I tell people sometimes they're like, well, you know, I don't want to be working hard. I want to, you know, be laying on a beach. I said, mm -hmm. show me one successful person, like super successful that that doesn't work hard or does something involved in that. You know, the only ones that don't, let's be honest, are someone that, you know, obviously inherit money sure. or, or they come into some type of dynamic, which I'm not, you know, it's one, it's to each his own. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest thing, it's like, if you want to get to the top of industry, if you want to perform at a peak level, it's like, it's going to take work. Just that constant repetition, see where you're wrong. How can we maneuver? 
it, it's the same with most companies, most people, just in general, you see the ones that are, are really passionate and, and, you know, they're primed for success. It always seems that they have something set up and they're, they're working like dogs, even when it's, you know, late at night or whatever it is. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people who've been looking for for that elusive job, the one that pays loads and loads of money, but you don't have to do very much. And uh, nobody's found it yet. Um, I would have taken right. it, to find it, to be honest. But... I would take it too, you know, and, <laughs> and then we could do more marketing with it too and stuff and just showcase our life. So uh, what are some of the things, uh, what are some of the ways that we can set up work to really uh, optimize and leverage the strengths of millennials. What are some of the things that we need to do differently? Because, you know, obviously my generation, we can't just sort of say, well, this is, this is the round hole. You may be a square peg, but I'm going to bash you into it. Um, I've got to find the right way of, le of leveraging their, um, their, their, their expertise or their talents. So what are some of the ways I can do that? So I think one of the biggest things, uh, especially for millennials, is giving them a little bit of freedom in the sense that it's, I always find specifically from a leadership time, it's great to put pressure on somebody. I, I, like Tim Grover says, pressure is a privilege because it makes you, you know, kind of get into that focal point in your mind. Uh, but the biggest thing is just a little bit of freedom to say, you know, here's what you're going to be managing or working on. Give them the deliverables, everything that they have to do. And don't say, okay, in, in some ways, like maybe if you want to have a day where you want to work at home. That does it because as long as the work gets done, you have your deliverables all set up. Here's our targets. They know what they have to do. As long as they get those done and they do them within, you know, the timely manner and it's done in a right mind state where they're not, you know, you have complaints or anything. That's the best thing. So a little bit of freedom um, when you're managing these people to say here, you, but the thing with the freedom part, train them properly so that they know all the angles so that that's where you see issues where someone's not trained and then they don't know how to use the system or whatever it's going through. So if you, you invest into your, your employees, your staff, you put a lot of, you know, training into them, give them freedom. So once in a while, if they want to work from home, if it's that type of job, let them work from home, you know, who, maybe someone is better optimized where they work at 10 in the morning. So they don't have to be there. They're not a, they're not a morning person. So let them work 10 to six, as long as they get that work done. So, you know, being very clear and concise on the deliverables the time factor and say, here, I'm going to let you do it. If you don't do it, then we're going to have the talk where I'm going to have to, you know, maybe uh, ride you a little bit more, sit you down and say, here you go. The hardest part I think with these businesses is that people, we all have potential. We have so much potential to do good things, but again, it's, it's getting, you know, putting the right person in that job and then training them so that we can, you know, really optimize those, those strengths, which is difficult because all of a sudden another shiny object comes up over here. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're going to pay me five dollars more, whatever it is, and someone you know goes that way, which yeah, yeah, and I, I think that's a great point too, and uh, and not just uh, not just that, it's all the shiny new toys that keep coming out that I think is going to do my job for me so much easier, and say, look at this tool, and if I had that tool, and uh, and sometimes it's more about, as you say, it's about the focus and the process, and then the other pieces, the other pieces fall into place. The biggest thing as well is is the people you're working with. And the people you're working for as well, that environment. So like, let's say you were my boss and, and if you were a really good guy, like, you, you know, you're stern, but you were a good guy. And it's the same as the online sphere. You buy into people and their emotions, the emotions you're feeding off of. So if you have a really toxic workplace, no matter what, it's not going to work out. You're going to have to get out of there, that person or whatever. But if you're, you're someone that's invested in your people and you make them feel good, that's going to, that's going to add to your retention point. And if they're getting paid and if they have incentives, just want, it, it just goes up the spectrum of, of what you're doing. Yeah, and I think that's a good point uh, that you raise. I mean, about the the culture and the organization. But from the other side, though, it's like if if the culture and the organization don't suit you, then don't go to work there or or go work somewhere else. Um, you know, you can't always. You know, sometimes cultures you're not going to appreciate them, but they work for that organization, so it's just not the right fit. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and that's the thing where I can't stand when people tell me like. I can't find a job. I said, have you been on LinkedIn? How many resumes do you give out? Do you call the manager? You know, you know, and it's the same thing. It's like the basic due diligence that a lot of them aren't doing. And uh, well, you know, have you done everything? Are you willing to move? You know, those yeah, kind of I mean, all those things. And I think the other thing that uh, is to bear in mind is that uh, the world is changing in many fundamental ways from a work perspective. And now with you, you can hire independent contractors um, from anywhere in the world, why right? people highly skilled, highly educated people who are working, you know, in, in other areas in the world and who don't cost as much and whatever. So you have a lot of competition, you know, um, wherever, whatever job you have or wherever you are. And I think that's something that people need, need to bear in mind is, is also 
the fact that you have a lot of competition so you definitely have to you have to stand out it's totally true so every time i'm dealing with students primarily same question we hit them with and, and they all sit there like deer in the headlights what makes you irreplaceable mm -hmm. because I, I can go and it's it's sad to say it, and you don't want to be that person mm -hmm. but you can go hire someone super technical on video editing right off of Fiverr yep. or, or Upwork. And just yep. like you said, so you got to have those skill sets and, and constantly be building. And then again, if they don't have the, the clarity of it, then they just eat, get eaten alive into the cycle and the system. Then there, there are another people that are taking those jobs that are just going to pay them and then, you know, creating a bad work environment where they're not delivering. And then it just, it's a really bad cycle. Mm. I find we really need yep. to kind of, or go ahead. No, no, go finish your thought. I was going to say, I think we really need to, we, we really need to help people get very focused and clear um, on where they want to go just as, as themselves, because it's not even about the hundred thousand dollars you want to make. It's mm -hmm. more so, are you living, you know, a lifestyle you want? Because that's, it's again, feeding off of the emotions. Mm -hmm. It would, you know, at the end of the day, that'll affect your family and other people you're around and things like yeah. that. And I 100% and agree with you. And I think, again, that's a that's a cross generational thing is the focus is that if you can really if you can really get clear in your head about what you want to do, if you can focus on the things that matter, if you can put the distractions aside, um, you know, you'll have a much better you will have much better professional life, you'll have a much better personal life as well. Um, last question I want to ask you before we finish up is. Uh, turn the clock forward a bit and and tell me what what is what are what are millennial leaders going to look like? What are millennial CEOs and millennial executives? Because they're all people are moving into those positions now. So what are the, how are they going to be different? Do you think than the generation before them? So I think the in the one of the main different points is that we have access to so much information. So the, these these kind of CEOs will be a lot more equipped. Again, it's going to be how they're going to be versatile. So some of them, what you might find that a, a generation before that's very stern. The thing with the millennials, and this is where there's kind of a divide, is, mm -hmm. is we have to make sure they're disciplined. So again, they, they're coming in younger that you have this younger generation coming up that's highly intelligent, that has all the skills and capabilities, but it's going to come back to the experience point where it's like, who are, who, who are some of their mentors? That's one of the biggest things I'd look in. So if you're coming into a big CEO position as a millennial, I think the things you're going to notice we're going to really uh, hit on uh, with companies and organizations is the culture again, mm -hmm. their mission. They're going to re get really defined on the mission. Investing in people, I, I would hope. The one big thing that you see, I think, that's really come out in the last few years that people are talking about that millennials will hit on is emotional intelligence. Yeah. Uh, the, the purpose, the purposefulness and the emotional intelligence of their workers where it's just like this is you know you want to get to know these people and Gary Vaynerchuk is a prime example where he you know is someone that really invests in his company and he goes around he meets all the new staff that he brings on even though he's got a fortune 500 mm -hmm. stuff like that I think millennials are really invest in his EQ uh, the culture aspect getting really really clear on the mission and then the last one if I was the top CEO of a big fortune 5 training you got to train your people and you know if you're coming from sales mm -hmm. you have to train these people you know, really well and, and to keep them around. Yeah. And to be honest, you got to train them anyway. And even if they don't stick around, you know, you can't, it's, uh, it's like that great, uh, the great saying is like some people used to say, but what happens if I train these people and they leave? And the answer is, but what happens if you don't train them and they stay? <laughs> right. I like that. That's actually a really great one. 100%. Yeah. Well, listen, Connor, this has been fantastic. Before we go, uh, I'd just like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you. Oh, 100%. I, I, I thank you very much for having me on the show. Firstly, uh, mm -hmm. so a little bit about myself. So our focus point right now, we have a coaching program. And what we're doing, we're building the next generation of entrepreneurs and leaders. The whole purpose of what we're trying to do, so especially with the online sphere, is that we want to help people build a self-sustaining platform for the rest of their life. That means being able to monetize a brand online, overcome any types of fears you're feeling, and then obviously build yourself into a leader that can impact people, bring them into your community, and most importantly, have an impact. My whole philosophy, guys, is pretty simple that it's not about making lots of money. It's about making that money matter. So yeah, you want to make money so you can build these things, schools, causes, whatever you're trying to do that align with your mission. Uh, but we want to make that money matter and have a difference because the more people we bring in and the more people we help, the better off the world is, the better off you feel, the better off these people go out and compound that uh, to everybody else. So for myself, uh, I keep it pretty straightforward. We, we run a, a trifecta type business, sales, marketing, and lead generation. And then we have the coaching program on the side. Uh, and like I said, my goal, we want to build the next generation of entrepreneurs. I hope that you guys will hear about me and see me as uh, one of the top leaders in Canada. 
coming out to to really give that millennial generation and generation z a boot in the rear end uh, and make sure that we get really clear mm-hmm. on uh, what we got to do yeah listen thanks uh, connor it's uh, be, been a fantastic interview my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm see you all for another expert interview really soon thank you oh thank you john you're the man i appreciate it <laughs>